Hey you guys, Kali Yuga here with a new quick start tutorial. Um, so today we're launching what some people call image to image, what other people call initial image editing. So the way this works is you start with an image, could be a selfie, it could be you know a picture you took on vacation, could be your breakfast, any image. Um, and you upload it to Dream Studio. And what this allows you to do is iterate on your input image using the prompt interface that we're already used to, the tools and settings that we're already used to, to make something entirely new based on the colors, shapes, and architecture of your original image. So here I've uploaded my profile picture, which is itself something I did using an initial image in Disco Diffusion a long time ago. Well, March. And now, to bring it full circle, I'm using this as the initial image to sort of show you guys around this new tool. So up here, we've got image strength. This is important because it will affect how much your output looks like your original image. 50% is usually good for things like portraits. I find that going up much above 50% it can work really well, but it can also make you look like an eldritch terror, which is maybe some people's cup, not my cup. And then going further down, it's going to look more like your prompt, especially if you have your CFG scale turned all the way up, and less like the initial image, although it'll still try to cue pretty closely to the colors of the initial image and somewhat to the layout. So let's just, for starters, run this with the default prompt. It's going to look weird because the default prompt doesn't have anything to do with portraits, but let's see what happens anyway. Actually, that's pretty cool. All right, so if we turn up the CFG scale, it's probably going to look more like a landscape and less like a person. But again, one of the beauties of AI art is you can hypothesize and then test really quickly to see if you're right. And sometimes you will be, and sometimes you won't be. Oh no, look at that. So, um, so that, that's pretty cool. Um, but you can see there's still some galaxy stuff going on over here. Just for the heck of it, let's turn the steps all the way up. So you can see this is more like the initial prompt usually gives in terms of background. Still got this person in the foreground. Really, really cool, actually. So I'm going to turn everything back down to default, and we're going to try a different prompt with the same initial image. Just do the classic trending on ArtStation setup here and see what happens. Okay, that's pretty cool. Just for the heck of it, let's uh, mess with the image strength a little bit. Let's say I want it at 75% instead of 50%. So again, this is how much influence your underlying initial image has on the output. And I accidentally set it back to the default prompt, so I put the right prompt back down here. It's a lot closer to my initial image. This, again, can be really, really awesome for some usages. For portraits, I haven't found turning up the image scale much above 50 works super well. This is, this is really cool still, like there's nothing wrong with this. Let's see what happens when we turn that down to, let's do 35. This should have a lot more variation from, from the original image. Definitely a contemporary watercolor. There's some really cool line work going on here, really cool use of color. Let's just see what happens if we boost the number of images up to nine, see how different each of these are from the initial image. Oh no, it gave me a beak. You can see that each of these is really unique, does a really good job on watercolors, all clearly drawing from the color palette of the initial image and, and also from the placement of elements in the initial image, but they're all really, really different, especially the one with the beak, which is just ridiculous. I Actually, I'm going to save that because it's so funny. And just for comparison's sake, let's go back to the editor, turn it up to 75% again, and... So yeah, I mean, there's definitely variation in each of these still at 75%. They're not the exact same as the input image, but they're not nearly as divergent as when you run this at a lower percentage. For the sake of interest, let's try this with the CFG scale where I usually run it at 13 and the steps where I usually run them at 100 and see what happens. Takes longer, higher credit usage, but I like the detail and the structural elements that I'm seeing a lot better in this. Like, look at that phoenix head, that's awesome. And yeah, I'm gonna probably download that too. Maybe I'll even update my profile picture, you never know. Oh, look at that eyeball, that's so cool. Another phoenix. Yeah, so this is a really, really powerful tool that allows you to iterate really quickly on concepts, on images, on really anything you can imagine. What I've shown you here is just really scratching the surface of, of what you can do with this tool. And I can't wait to see what people make with this.
that's going to do it for this video, but be sure to check back soon. I'm going to have more new cool things to share with you guys shortly.